Um, you know, it's it's been awesome having a bunch of influx of the Asian fighters in here. We've had Tam Japan, the guys that have come over for years. Uh, Teruto Ishihara actually came to us maybe five or six years ago before he was in the UFC. And um, so he was one of the first guys to come over and really start implementing the blending of stuff. You know, Japanese have a, a great background of, of traditional martial arts and they, they love the striking game and and um, they have some pretty good wrestlers, but, you know, blending everything together is, is, is what they get. And then iron sharpening iron, you know, it's, it's definitely a, a competitive place, our team. Mm. You know, we have, I think, maybe 23, 24 guys that are at the highest level, guys and girls that are at the highest level in the UFC. And then I think 60 or so that are, you know, climbing the ranks or at other organizations and stuff like that. So um, Song also, song, Song's over from China. Mm. And I think, you know, what happens is a lot of times people will go and check out a bunch of different gyms and, in my opinion, ours is the best in the world. You know, when they get in there, it's, a, it's, it's kind of like, man, I, you know, they're not going to be able to find that in any other place. And it's a combination of the culture that we built as far as being fun and, and consistent where we have a ton of practices throughout, th- throughout the day that people can kind of make their own schedules. It's, uh, you know making sure that we have fun outside of, of the of the practice. We go out and, and do things, you know, enjoy life. And uh, and then a real attention to all the different disciplines in mixed martial arts. We do jiu-jitsu and, and wrestling and boxing and kickboxing individually, and we do a lot of blending also. So um, And now the facility is on, on top of the world too. So we have, you know, 21,000 square foot facility. We have... Everything in there. We have our strength and conditioning. We have yoga. We have uh, PT on hand and massage and and the cafe and and stuff like that. So um, it's cool, man. It's it's a, it's kind of a dream spot for for guys that love mixed martial arts. Um, it's a unique system that we have. So you know they the guys can pay uh, train with Tam. They come in for week stints. And we can put them up and they, they're able to train with the team. And that's kind of how we find some of our talent. Guys that, that can hang and guys that love it there, um, they, they just make it a priority to get there. And at that point, once they earn the respect, we have a lot of coaches. We have maybe 10, 15 coaches that are at different levels and doing different things. So, um, you know, the guys that are most consistent and so, show the most potential and, and, you know, earn the respect of the team and the, and the coaches – uh, get the best look, and Song's one of those guys that just you can't get him out of the gym. Mm-hmm. And I, I ha- he had his translator with him, and I was telling her like, "Hey, it's it's probably a good idea if Song like s- sit some of these practices out." And she told him that, and he's he's not a man of many words, but he basically said, "Ah, there's a lot of stuff to learn. I don't want to miss anything, you know." And and that kind of mentality is how you see guys go from from unknown to, to world champs. I've seen it in guys like Cody Garbrandt and, and uh, you know, guys throughout our team that, that have stand, stood out throughout, throughout time are those guys that just are eating it up and getting the most out of it and putting the most time in. So Song is, is impressive. I was trying to figure out what his background was. Um, I'm like, oh, his wrestling's pretty good. And then I'd see him box. I'm like, Jesus, boxing's really good. And then, you know, the jiu-jitsu and, and everything else. And uh, it turns out he was a boxer first, but then he started wrestling, and, and, and the focus has been you know, MMA. Mm. So I talked to Song, actually, and, and he has a, a friend here who's saying that he has 50 to 100 fighters in China at his home gym. And then I asked him, like, you know, how is that going? He said, oh, I'm the best one. <laughs> you know? So it's hard for him to get a push. <laughs> and uh, so it's cool to, to take the cream of the crop and get him to to, you know, win some and lose some in our room. Um, it's getting up there. You know, it's, it's one of those sports where you don't need a massive facility to get good. You could be in your garage or your front yard and, and, and throw thousands of punches and kicks and get just as good as somebody who's, uh, you know, in the top state of the art gym in the world. So, um, it's kind of an even playing field and, um, you know, anywhere in the world, there's a specialist in fighting, somebody who's the baddest dude or has accomplished the most. And, and when people can find that, um, it, it's, it's pretty cool to see the rest of the world just kind of catching up with the powerhouses. It's been U.S. and Brazil for a long time, and, and Japan had a, a good foothold, and, and everybody wants to compete. Everybody wants that pride of, 
of look, our people are tough, our people are resilient, our people are fighters, and and um, you know the the Chinese influence is coming. It's coming fast. A guy like Song is, you know, last time he brought five guys with him from different gyms that that were coming down from China, and uh, it's it's cool to see the growth and and people embracing the sport and, and wanting to to make a, a name for themselves. Um, you know, for for Teruto, he's really grown as a person over the last couple of years. He's you know he's known for saying the reason why he fights, he's fighting for his ladies or something of that sort, and um, and he you know has really straightened up his his lifestyle and and been super uber focused on on the fight game. And sometimes that's a weird thing, you know. It means more to you when you're trying harder, but you know the the competition is getting up and. And, and you can start to feel the pressure more. Before he was kind of like just like ah, rock star life, you know, doing his thing. And now he's cut down a weight class and he's a lot more focused. So um, the competition's not getting easier for, for him. But he's a young guy and his his style is really, really cool. It's, it's, it's a Japanese style and he has the Tam Japan guys that come in and they kind of tweak this unique style that he has. And then he's able to add the wrestling and the jiu-jitsu. So uh, being a young guy... A couple of losses is is not a big deal in my opinion. It is to him, of course, but for me, I feel like the trajectory of of Teru is 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 only going up. You know, with wins or with losses, and that was a close fight in in Perth. It was a really close. I mean, I I feel like you know it was about volume on that on that side, and he had some big some big punches where he did some good damage, but. Um, you know, it was it came down to a numbers game on that on that front, and, and he lost a close one. Preparation and uh, being able to put out your best effort can can take away that sting. You know, if if you know that you actually put in your best work and you actually exhausted yourself and, and tried your hardest, it's a lot easier. It doesn't feel good to lose, but at least you can't blame yourself as much. So. Uh, at that point, you have to be introspective and, and you have to take it as a lesson and say, okay, what do I do? Ne- need to do more? And, you know, we talked right afterwards with Teru. You know, he had his mom that came with him the first time she had left Japan to come to Australia. And he's got a, a, a good, you know, extended family base out in America. And he's got his, his, his following and his support in Japan. So I think he's in a good place. You know, it's, it's, it's easier to, to lose when your whole life doesn't come crumbling down because of a loss, and that's unhealthy when that happens, you know. Uh, the best champions have understood that, you know, they don't change as an individual with the wins and losses. It's, it's a, a critiquing and a, and a getting better and making adjustments. So um, he's got a tough opponent this next one. I, I feel like they're bringing in a, 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 you know, a young gun that they're trying to build up, and, and so Teru's going to have his hands full, and, and I think that's good for him. Yeah, you know, when I first started watching Bruce Lee, uh, everything was dubbed, so it was it was like, you know, he would move his lips a bunch and then uh and then the English would come after that. We loved messing around with that when we were kids and and um you know, I remember watching you know, all his movies where where he was doing incredible stuff and such an impressive athlete and um and really if you find out the history of, of Bruce Lee, he never really fought uh, in in traditional competitions, supposedly there's a lot of underground stuff that happened. But um, he had a school, and his thought process was uh, constantly evolving. And you know, his Ji Kune Do was the first one to say, "Hey, you need to know wrestling. You need to know submissions. You need to know boxing." Because he was tired of taking his guys around and getting uh, beat up by a wrestler or a boxer because they were trying to do, you know, just their own little style so he was like hey we got to use this and we got to use that and my fighters are going to learn boxing and have this many years of boxing and so a lot of people don't know that um from an outsider's unless you really delve in and say why was he so influential but that's why he he was the guy that, that said hey mixed martial arts for fighting that's that's the key yeah he, he was chuck norris kareem abdul jabbar uh Bo, boyo young yeah. boyo young um yeah, it was a little bit of everything, and and you know it was it was the the one inch punch and and uh, precision and stuff like that. But you also got to see some submissions happening in in the in the fight game. So um, yeah, I should probably when I, when life slows down for me, if it ever slows down, I'll probably go back and watch a bunch of old Bruce Lee stuff. But it's been full speed ahead as of now.
Yeah, I feel like, you know, Bruce Lee's prowess was that uh, he first off didn't ever seem to be too uh, too open for offense. He was always uh, head on a swivel, keeping his 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 body and his mm-hmm. and his footwork on point. And um, you know, I think again the confidence thing. Yeah. You, know, you can tell. I've avoided a lot of fights by people just knowing that I'm not scared. Right. You know, and and uh, I think that goes goes with all great fighters. There's an inner confidence that, you know, I can beat anybody. And sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't, but um, you have to believe that. And I think Bruce Lee had that. Since we never really got to see him fight, it'd be hard to say who a good matchup for him would yeah. be, but of course you'd like to see him fight Demetrius Johnson because he's, you know, Demetrius is, is setting records and, and about the same size. Yeah. and. Um, I would have to give the little edge to Demetrius at, at this day and age. We've learned so much about the sport. But uh, one thing I can tell just from the presence of Bruce Lee, his appearance, and, and the skill set you get to see in his movies is mm-hmm. he definitely is a guy with self-confidence and self-belief, which is a massive part of our sport. Mm-hmm. He's obviously a very gifted athlete, whether it become you know muscle composition or speed or explosivity. And... Uh, you know, I, I'd like to see the the rest of his game round out, but I think Demetrius would, would definitely have an edge. Would you have had that crack? Oh, of course. <laughs> uh, you don't, <laughs> you know that. You don't don't tease me with a good time. I mean, I love fighting, and 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 he's such a legendary guy. It'd be amazing to mm. to go toe to toe with the man. I'd like to see a a, a Bruce Lee Lyoto Machida matchup. You know, I feel like he kind of embodies the essence of of Bruce Lee a little bit, you know, timing and placement yeah, and yeah. that traditional martial art. Yeah. Uh, I think that'd be a good uh, tit-for-tat match. Mm-hmm. I was just saying, I was talking with one of our assistant coaches, Mike Malott, and he was saying, it's crazy how Demetrius Johnson is so good, but he, he can't command an audience yet, pay-per-views or anything like that. And and my suggestion was, and I, and I wanted to do this when I was the champion of the world, was... Let's have Demetrius do some super fights. I know he would love to go up and fight a 55 pounder or even a 70 pounder or, or even a heavyweight. You know, I I guarantee you a heavyweight would have a lot of trouble getting their hands on Demetrius, and, and it would come down to tit for tat. How do you how do you take a guy down without committing on top? It'd be trips and and that kind of yeah. stuff for fakes and feints. So, um, you know, I'd love to see Demetrius because I know he'd be up for the challenge. Do some. Uh, some freak show fights.